G'day frothers, welcome back. So, out of these three tools, impact driver, drill driver, rotary hammer, which one do you think has the most torque? Well, we are going to find out today, and uh, pretty excited about this, because this is one of the first things I found out when I started doing my uh, rotary hammer testing. Uh, so we will go over who has the most torque out of here, how much torque does a rotary hammer have, and a bunch of other torque stuff. In fact, I'm just going to be talking about torque today. Um, well, actually, talk and talk sound the same in my accent. So how about let's say we're going to have a chin wag about rotational force. Yeah. Uh, all right, so if you're new to the channel, uh, basically I do a whole bunch of tests on different rotary hammers to try and uh, rank their performance and um, one of them is a torque test. So it's pretty simple. Uh, basically I just drive one of these big lag screws or coach screws, whatever you call those, uh, into the stump out back. And I measure how uh, how much torque it takes to release them. Uh, using my torque meter here. So pretty simple test. Uh, it works pretty well to uh, rank the different tools in terms of torque. And uh, yeah, I well, while I was doing these tests, I also you know tried out a couple of other tools and got some pretty interesting results. So uh, let's let's. Uh, Let's take a look at how these ones go. Uh, all right, so first up we have the DeWalt Impact. That is the DCF887, uh, set to three, set to three, uh, five amp hour battery. And uh, let's see how tight she can get this lag screw into the tree stump. All right, 71.37 Newton meters, averaging up those runs there. How about that? Okay, I wasn't expecting that actually, um, but she did really well, uh, better than any of the other rotary hammers. In fact, uh, or about twice as good as, as any of the others, and you know, pretty effortless as well. Really nicely demonstrated just the real, the simple genius of how an impact driver works and how uh, it, you know, it just makes talking things really effortless, you know, I was just holding it there with one hand. So interestingly, it wasn't actually able to drive those screws all the way in because towards the end there, it would actually just start skipping like the anvil inside there. Oh, the, the hammer inside here would just start skipping over the anvil. Um, so yeah, that was, that was uh, yeah, very interesting. It did get bloody tight. It was hard to undo those uh, screws and it also kind of ruined the adapter here. So that is uh, no longer a hex adapter, it's kind of bashed the, the sides there so much that it doesn't actually fit in here anymore. So, interesting. Good stuff. Nicely, nicely done, DeWalt. Uh, I really do like this driver. It's a real cracker. All right, so next up we've got the Milwaukee uh, M18 FPD20. So this is a very common uh, hammer drill driver. A lot of you probably have one as well. Uh, like me, you may have noticed it's actually a bit too talky for a lot of applications. Um, especially seeing as the electronic clutch does not release very easily at all. But, you know, still, very nice drill, 
bog standard tool. Um, let's see how she goes. Holy shit balls, 80.57. This thing had more torque than the bloody impact driver. That was amazing. All right, so um, that is a really interesting result and uh, not the only interesting result because firstly, what it tells us is rotary hammers don't actually have all that much torque, nowhere near as much torque as you would think. Wow, so yeah, really interesting result. Uh, that actually tells us a couple of things about all these tools, really. So, um, firstly, I, I guess it seems that rotary hammers just don't have all that much torque. Not nearly as much as you'd expect for such a big tool, you know? So, like, the motor on this one looks about a quarter the volume of the motor or compartment of this one. So, you know, what's, what's going on there? Why would a rotary hammer not need that much torque. Well, basically it's because on a drill driver, your drilling, your turning is what is actually cutting the material. So with every every every, you know, millimeter of rotation there, the drill bit is cutting away material. Whereas with a rotary hammer, it's the hammering. The hammering is what cuts the material. The rotation is really just there to auger out the dust and you don't need that much torque for that. You know, so if we check out a hammer drill bit, you can see that it's actually the widest on the side of the chisel there. So really only that bit there is actually touching the material. All the rest of this is just auguring out that dust. So yes, it's true that this is a big drill bit. It's gonna take a lot of torque to turn it, but it doesn't actually need that much because really when you're hammering, when you're hammer drilling, this is cutting a hole and then really the rest of it is just spinning freely. So yeah, really interesting there. Such a big motor, it doesn't actually have that much torque in there. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah, blew me away when I first saw that. Uh, all right, so there is plenty more to talk about on that subject, uh, but I reckon we'll just leave it there for the time being. And uh, I will just say, if you're looking for a high torque drill and you have a rotary hammer, I wouldn't bother. I would just grab a normal drill driver. As long as it has a side handle, it's probably going to have stacks of torque, a lot more than one of these. So as for why we ended up with this result with the impact driver not having as much torque uh, as the drill driver, uh, well, I reckon we'll uh, leave that for another episode and uh, yeah, let's leave it there for now. I will see you back at the bench again soon and uh, who knows, maybe we'll even have a talking about talk part two. To yakin', yappin', uh, yappin' about rotary. What was it? Anyway, Puru, thanks for watching and scratches later. Yeah.